in today's feast, the, the, the child, the Christ child is still in his mother's arms, but already he is being offered in sacrifice. The presentation in the temple is a joyful mystery which prefigures a sorrowful mystery, the crucifixion. Uh, and it's a fitting transition between Christmas and Easter. Like, at his offering in the temple, he's seen as both priest and victim. Okay? He's the fulfillment of all the Old Testament priests and sacrifices. Like we say, he comes to the temple really as high priest, but he also comes as the Lamb of God, okay? the one who is to sacrifice and the one who is to be sacrificed, the one who is to offer and the one who is to be offered. So today, Jesus offers himself to the Father, but he offers himself through the hands of Our Lady. Um, and with respect to the Blessed Virgin Mary, we would say that at the Annunciation, Mary said, be it done unto me according to your word. Well, today at the presentation, she says, be it done unto him according to your word. Her, her self-gift is, is expanded to include her son. Okay? So actually, one of Mary's titles is the Queen of Martyrs. Okay? And the reason Mary is called the Queen of Martyrs, even though she never suffered martyrdom, is because she offered a life that she loved infinitely more than her own. Like the martyrs offered their own lives. But... Mary offered her son a, a life she loved infinitely more than her own. I mean, like, maybe one quick way to understand that. I once said to a parent, it's very difficult to be a teenager these days. And the mother responded, it's even more difficult to be the mother of a teenager. Okay. Well, so they say what, what Christ suffered in his body, Mary suffered in her soul. Um, the martyrs are often depicted with the instruments of torture in their hands, like St. Stephen is depicted carrying a, a stone. He was stoned to death. St. Paul holding a sword. But in the Pieta, the Blessed Virgin Mary is depicted with Jesus in her arms, like the, the body taken down from the cross. In the image of Our Lady of Sorrows, Mary's heart is pierced with seven swords. Like, and, and that's the prophecy of today's gospel. A sword of sorrow will pierce your heart. Like, we say that the passion of Christ is the sword that pierces the heart of Mary. E even the immaculate heart of Mary, like the, the sacred heart of Jesus has a crown of thorns around it. The immaculate heart of Mary has a sword and plus it has a crown of roses around it. Now, the, the symbolism of the roses is that roses have thorns, but when you look at the, the roses, the, the sufferings, the thorns are hidden. For Mary, her sufferings were more interior, more hidden, not external. They say everything Jesus suffered in his body, Mary suffered in her soul. Mary experienced his passion in her soul. Um, and so today we see that his sacrifice is, becomes her sacrifice. She unites herself to his self-giving to the Father. In fact, like some, some spiritual writers say that, point out that no one is more responsible for the suffering and death of Jesus Christ than Mary, because Mary gave him a body. Without Mary, there's no incarnation, there's no redemption. Okay. She gave him his humanity, the instrument of his torture. Okay. And, and so Mary's, um, Mary's yes included a yes to his passion. It, and, and she persevered in that yes to the foot of the cross. And in fact, they say our model of participation in the Mass is Mary at the foot of the cross. That's because Mary 
made his sacrifice her sacrifice. She united the consecration of herself to his sacrifice. Like on the cross, we say he offered the perfect amen to the Father. And at the foot of the cross, Mary unites her amen to his amen. And what does the Feast of the Presentation mean for us? Well, it means that we, make, we have to make his sacrifice our own also. Like we say, at every Mass, we offer his amen, his yes, to the will of the Father. But in the great amen, we, we unite our amen to his amen, our yes to God's will to his yes, our consecration of ourselves to his perfect consecration of his, himself on the cross. Okay? And so we're, we're kind of taken up into his amen, taken up into his worship. They say apart from the mass, there is no worship of God because apart from Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, there is no worship of God. So we come to worship God th through Jesus Christ, to give glory to the Father through the Son in the Holy Spirit. We say it's the Holy Spirit that empowers us to give our amen, uh, to unite our consecration, our, our self-offering to his consecration of himself. Just as that reading at that gospel said that the firstborn was consecrated to the Lord. And he remained consecrated to the Lord, uh, to Calvary, and he continues that self-offering so that we can unite ourselves to his self-offering. Okay. So today on this feast of the, the presentation, we place ourselves in Mary's arms and we ask her to offer us in union with herself. Um, to, to the Father, uh, to unite us more perfectly, ever more perfectly, with his amen on the cross. <laughs>